Hello, buddy. My name is Eric, and today we're doing a bit of role reversal. So, in the interest of finding out, first of all, how do these stealers work? And second of all, what privileges do they need? I mean, there's plenty of people, like with the current uh, League of Legends update, who are very, very worried about kernel level. But on the other extreme of the privilege spectrum is a normal user. So how much privilege do you actually need to steal a user's credentials and therefore basically anything you do in your browser, which nowadays is most of what people do on their computers, can be exfiltrated? So I wrote a simple stealer. Uh, here it is. It's called I, I called it rat demo because I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to make, but this is not really a rat. It, it's entirely one directional. It doesn't take commands from the control and command server. It simply he sends data. What this program will do, and I'm going to delete this, but I, I just left this running just to verify that the auto re-enable does work. So we're going to delete this. So this program does a couple of things. First of all, it will check if Chrome is, oh, it's already done. It's already exfiltrated your data and it's created a rerunner. So I actually created two modes, but I only have ever used uh, this mode, uh, which simply uh, will check if Chrome is open. If it is, it will simply wait until it's closed. The reason we have to wait until it's closed is because it is impossible to steal session cookies while Chrome is open. There is technically a way that uses the volume shadow copy service. That's how the uh, samples that I've shown in videos do it. But that does require administrator, and it's a lot more complicated. So I thought, well, given you will inevitably close Chrome at some point, why not just set it up this way? And when you're inactive, it will run every single minute until it successfully gets your cookies. So what does it do exactly? Well, we can simply demonstrate that because this version is not very stealthy at all. Uh, I don't know why my KDE menu keeps coming up. I had set it not to do that. Uh, Uh, and it actually prints everything it does in the console. So the first thing it will do is it will get your private key from Chrome. And I, I'm not going to explain the super low-level details of this because I don't, I don't want to teach people how to make stealers. So it will do that. No admin required because Chrome runs at user level. So it doesn't need admin for that. Then the cookies are simply stored in a SQLite database. So we just copy that. What you're seeing here is a printout of a... A uh, vector of 8-bit integers, which is simply a way of storing single bytes of data in Rust. Uh, this is not really indicative of the data, but you can process it back in and ultimately dump it as a file that can then be opened in SQLite. So that's how uh, this works. No admin required. Self-replicating, and I also, I copy the, oh, I'll show you. We copy the exe to 10 because that's what a lot of uh, malware does. I just called it Chrome Updater because that seems to be a popular trend. And pretty much anywhere that your user, anything you can run without elevated, another unelevated program can get. That's simply how Windows and most operating systems, to be clear. Uh, Flatpak on Linux is designed to have better, more granular permissions and Mac OS has a really restrictive by default system, which prevents this from being trivially possible. Although, as we have seen, uh, many of these malwares will simply ask for admin and people will simply give it. So it's not always even necessary. But I just thought that was uh, potentially interesting. Uh, so now let's just show how we could get rid of this of course. I will never distribute this, but you would delete this. And now the infection is mostly solved. We can also, just out of curiosity, because while obviously this is an unseen virus sample in that I have never distributed this anywhere and never will, um, it does do some suspicious things. So some antiviruses will use what is called heuristics, which is essentially the same way that a, a malware analyst can detect what a piece of malware is doing, uh, it will simply look at the behavior and say, hey, that looks malicious. Uh, why are you opening those folders? That that one's not as obvious. Why are you uh, copying an executable to temp and creating a 
task schedule to rerun it. That's a pretty strange thing to do. Uh, why are you copying the cookies? And why are you accessing that decrypt library? Now, I've already uploaded it once, so it doesn't have to run again. What you can see is essentially none of these catch it. And I'm pretty suspicious of the three that did, purely because what I think they're doing is something a lot easier. You can either you can either like catch behavior, or you can simply say, I've never seen this executable before, therefore probably virus, which isn't a great, but if, if they have a lot of users, chances are if they've never seen the executable before, uh, probably some questions to be asked. And here we go, and you can see, and this is all, yep, uh, compiled using Rust. And yeah, this is all correct. Now I, I used, as I said, I did exactly zero crypting of any kind, no Thymida, so very easy to reverse engineer, but it doesn't seem to be able to catch it a priori. Now you can also see, and this is, this is a red flag, but of course this is a legitimate Windows function, uh, that I call crypt unprotect data, and that's how you actually de get the decryption key for the cookies. So that's how that works. And that is the command and control server. The rest of these, I, I don't even know why they're on here. Uh, bundled files, dropped files, that's just that. JavaScript. I'm guessing those are just Microsoft IPs that are not directly related. And here are all these sandboxes. Oh, medium, okay. Uh, now this, to me, so I've seen this tag in a lot of executables. I'm just going to guess it's not actually useful then because uh, I do not detect debug environment. Uh, this is just a release build. There's no no debug detection Yeah. Uh, okay, these are two that are kind of not noteworthy. Uh, yeah, I did do that. I did not use HTTP, uh, but mainly just because that can actually be easier. Uh, yes, that's a red flag. No, we did. We don't do that. This is just kind of. Yeah, we do encode using. Okay, I guess it can't see what we're doing with that information, but the reason that we do that is simply to uh, extract cookies. It doesn't catch. It doesn't catch uh, that one. Uh, yeah, we do that. We don't. So, okay. This one, maybe. So not a, not a ton of uh, detection here. So then the obvious question is, if this is what you can do without administrator, uh, what does having more privileges allow? So one of the things that I learned is for task scheduler, you can, you can create an inactivity task, which is what I did, with no privileges, and you can repeatedly run that, which functionally behaves the same as a login, but to create an on login trigger, you need administrator right. So that's one thing. Uh, of course, the other thing is we could use a volume shadow copy, but I, I don't think the trade-off in detectability is really worth it. Uh, you can access more things. In fact, if you have administrator, you can pretty much do anything other than some Windows security, which has some special, uh, and there is trusted installer, which makes modifying Windows files just a little bit trickier. But so there's that. But in terms of stealing your personal data, there is really no use for any uh, spyware to have any. So then, yeah, just finally, I'm going to make a bigger video on, on Vanguard, but so then what about kernel level? Well, the main thing that kernel level can do is rather than calling the Windows API, the kernel level can be a lot stealthier. And that's really what a rootkit does is other than by some specific uh, heuristics, uh, a rootkit completely conceals itself. It, it Once it has gotten into the system, uh, it can be totally stealthy. Uh, not all rootkits, like obviously 
anti-cheats do not conceal that they are there, although they do not want you knowing what they're doing, and they can they can be more stealthy. So that's going to be all for uh, this video. Actually, just one more thing, and another example of software that goes kernel mode is antivirus software. For the same reason uh, as anti-cheats, it needs to be at a lower or equal level than the malware so that it's able to protect itself. So if the malware just decides, oh, I see an antivirus program, I'm just going to turn that off, uh, it may fail to do that.